Yes, yes, people. Welcome to Season the Thing Podcast, Episode 4. Let's go. So I know you, you guys are wondering why this is the setup. Unfortunately, when I was on my way to the studio, I got a fr- text from my friend that she tested positive. So I'm having to isolate, guys. Sorry, I couldn't be there with you enjoying the food. It's all good, man. It's all good. People are probably thinking, yo, the intro looks a bit different today. <laughs> but guys, I'm all good, though. I took my test. I'm You're all, all good. Cleared. I'm just That's... doing a responsible thing, isolating. Big well up. done, well done. It's good. Well done, Zaya. You know, we're missing you here, you know. We're I'm, missing I'm you. Missing, I'm missing the, the food. You're missing oh, the food. Oh, you're missing oh, the food, okay. not us. Okay, say, cool. Say no more. Say no more. Just the <laughs> say no more. But how are you feeling, though? Yeah, Looking I'm good? feeling good. Um... I'm looking forward to getting into the conversation today. We've got a lot to talk about. Yeah, we definitely, do. Definitely. Definitely. Obviously, the Euros happened. You know, unfortunately, Italy won. Yes. The finals. I was upset, you know. Oh, bro, I was so I was upset. upset. Do you know what, I funny was enough, upset. Actually, I was happy, to be honest. You happy? happy? Yeah. Why? Because, um, because of the England, um, the England racism. I yeah. hear that. I hear that. But I didn't know that. During the game, during the game, I was upset. Mm. Obviously, after the game, after what happened, the racism towards mm. the players. But they were racist. They, they were racist from the start as well. They were booing when they were taking True. the knee. Was how it? are you going to be but booing? How are you going to be? The thing. But how are you going to be booing the players that you want to win for you? What kind of um, mm. energy is it's, that it's though? Mad. So you don't, you don't, you don't deserve to win England. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy. To be honest with you, I actually fell asleep. I woke up <laughs> in extra time. <laughs> it's actually you? mad yeah I, I fell asleep I was so upset I was meant to go to my cousin's house and I woke up literally mm. at 10 o'clock I said what's going on I thought it was 1-1 at extra time so I thought hopefully I was going to watch the rest of the game yeah it's, emotion- so. it's a typical England game to be honest we're big football fans as you can see Man United Jamaica I'm Jamaica. repping it man <laughs> keeping it real <laughs> why, why, why don't you tell me to wear my football shirt I've got I've got one who do you I didn't, get, I didn't get the memo I've got, a, just... I've got a Nigerian one I could have worn oh, okay 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 Look, their I'll... kits are sick though yeah, the yeah that's all that like, like minute. So remember, remember the last World Cup, 2018, yeah. that Nigerian top where that was gone. Really, yeah, that's good. one yeah. I got. Is but it? I'm, I'm a Man United, yeah. um, Man United supporter in this Why? household. Why? Well, I don't really follow football, but you know that's you're what my, my family support. My dad was born in Manchester. Oh, you're not. There you go. I'm from Manchester. <laughs> you know, trust you know me, by heart. Whatever I'm from you Jamaica. support, you're keeping Jamaica. Support. <laughs> yeah, man, repping reggae boys. Guys, if you know when this top's from, 98 World Cup, yeah. I need one. It's a legendary top. Legendary. The reggae boys. That that was our only World Cup. World Cup. Yeah. Boy, hopefully. One one game, come. though. I know. Beat, oh, was it Japan? I think it was two one. Boy, that was a historic moments. Japan, I remember. Yeah, two one. Historic moments. Historic but moment. yeah, back to the foot England um fans. De- it's Maybe I shouldn't say them, I was though. happy that Italy won. That was the wrong term. But I wasn't I wasn't disappointed. I was thinking, I yeah, that's what you get. Karma. So I have to get that in there before she get crucified. <laughs> no, I think a lot of people had that some sort of mindset as well, because obviously the ancestors the day, came and said, "We're not think, winning it for you." You got to th- you got to think about the moral side of things as well. You get me? You can't be going on booing everybody. You know what I mean? Hooligans, and then expect everyone to want you to win. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, football can only go so far. You know what I mean? A result only can go so far if you're acting like yeah. a like a thug or like a hooligan. Like, yes, yeah, true. You're not gonna be. Mm. It didn't yeah. make sense as well. It's like one minute we're winning. We've done so well in the tournament. Sterling was banging in goals. Yeah. Everyone was cheering. Get me next thing you know. Saka makes a penalty. Yeah. And then he's getting monkey emojis and all yeah. that. And then, you know, that's not But on. to be honest, even like Sterling, Sterling was still banging in goals. But even when he was still banging in goals, people were still saying he shouldn't be playing. Yeah, it's crazy. You know? like, so I don't who know scored the most goals for England in the tournament? Wasn't it Sterling? Kane, it was Kane. Was it Kane? Just about, yeah. okay. Yeah. I think Kane, Kane had was it? Four, it? Kane had four. I think Sterling had three. Oh. Freeze goals. Yeah, Sterling played really well though. He did. He did. Played, very, played very, game. Well, very well. Yeah. But again, typical of England fans. Unfortunately, um, even before the game, they were like rushing to get into the mm. into the into the stadium. They were like, I heard they were bribing some of the security guards. They were mm. busting down all the security frames to get oh. in. Yeah, I, I heard about videos that. of them I saw, I saw snorting videos. cocaine. Did you see it? Did you? Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. see that. You know, snorting cocaine before the match. It was a madness, a madness. Crazy, man. But we knew though, as soon as Saka, Sancho and Rashford missed those penalties, 
we kind of knew something was coming. Everyone, mm. everyone knew. And it's just sad, so sad to see that, you know. Oh, so man. it's such a shame. Big shame. It didn't, it didn't need to happen. It didn't. It you didn't. have to ask, ask yourself the question, why is it always the black players? Mm. I mean, they were born in the country. Yeah. You know, they've got British passports. Well, I didn't ask myself the question. I'm not surprised. We mm. just, know, I just, for me, why are we not this surprised, is how, that's just, that's just how it goes. Yeah, but that's why me. is it? Why is that? That's just how it goes. Like, I just, I was, a, I just know that people are going to be racist. That's it. Mm. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, oh, that's acceptable. But I'm not surprised at all. Mm. Like, it's just, like, yeah. also as well, it's not just that's football, what it's in society as well. Football's yeah. issue, racism, and also society, covert racism. You know. Blatant racism and social media as well. That's a big problem with yeah. all the trolls and stuff like that. That's the thing. I think it's the trolls. They're trying to identify who it is. Mm. You were saying like you should have like a passport identification to actually make a profile on Instagram or Twitter. That will definitely help minimise it. That's what a lot of people are saying at the moment. Should it be happening? It will, it will help totally. minimise it. But I don't know if I agree with like having, if you need to prove ID. Because think about some people, yeah, who, mm. who are... Um, they have a social media account, but someone doesn't know, or that someone controls their life, and that's like their little bit of um, escapism. And then some, they've got their ID, or they're holding their passport. That's true. And then hackers, know, like if you're, hackers. If you're in like, or if you're in like a, if you come from like a strict upbringing, you know, and your parents or your family, not even, or, or the adult, they've got your passport because mm. they don't want you to get on a plane or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's a good point. And then you can say like hackers could hack into the database of Facebook or Instagram. Get everybody's passport and then what? Yeah, you know what I'm and so I feel like point. Th- there's enough already of two where we have to put keep putting our ID or our identification of who we are already, and then they want to do more. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to have to give them my ID. It's too much. There's too much of of my information already out. So I'm alright, thanks. Yeah. But I get it why they're saying it, but mm. I think there's other ways. Just like how they, if you whack COVID in the story, something pops up about COVID. Yeah, yeah. I heard so that. they have the technology already. Mm. Real talk, real talk, man, real talk. And you know when it, the penalty kicks was just about to start or, you know, actually was taking place, you were kind of thinking, please don't miss, man. Rashford, don't miss, bro. Isn't it? We like, were thinking that. Sancho, don't miss, bro. Saka, <laughs> don't miss, bro. Because we were seeing the repercussions yeah. of what we were going to see online or in the newspaper. People were going to jump on them. Any excuse. I think we were just praying that they yeah. wouldn't miss. And I think they knew that themselves, you know. I think in their mind they were thinking, Imagine as soon that. as they walked out of that penny spot, thinking, if I miss this, yeah, I want to get it online. Yeah, it's true. You, you can know? see it, the nervousness they had as well. Like, Rash was one was so unlucky. Mm. I mean, Sancho as well. They were all unlucky, really. Mm. But, it's, it's you know, crazy. It's, it's, it's a shame, but we move, you know. There's the there's World Cup next year. Yeah, they should never do better next year, hopefully. Hopefully they might change national national <laughs> national team. You never know. I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. But they should change teams. They should. Mm. Yeah, but but Sterling, come back to Jamaica. It's interesting now that <laughs> more people having more of a say of football because now it's it's crossing over to the the political side of things, isn't it? Mm. The taking of the knee. More people are getting involved um, with th- their sort of suggestions. <laughs> you get me? Non football people. Just need to- yeah. It'll take a long time to get there, but we just need to have our own organisation that's run by like a more like black owned sporting um, organisation. So you don't have to worry about these things because the people at the top are going to be from the same background. You don't have to worry about this as much. Yeah. I was going to say that you mentioned it. It starts from the top. You know, you've got people like Boris, mm. Pretty Patel. They're not, they're not for the knee. They don't see the meaning of it and yeah. what value it brings. And when people at the top say that, everyone's going to follow. Mm. And you can see that through, through the charting, the booing, yeah. and the online. It's just the representation as well, because they don't understand. If you're not in it, yeah, you don't understand the importance well, of it. You just see it as like, oh, it's just a, another it's incident. Political thing, they see it yeah, as. it's a political thing. But if you're not in it, you don't know the history of mm. the struggle. You don't understand what our people have gone through, what the we've gone through, through school, through everyday life. It's not about politics. It's not about what you see on the TV screen. You know, it's not about the obvious racism. It's about the subconscious racism Covert that we racism. get all the time. The, the you know what I mean? The Covert. everyday racism. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Everyday racism, man. So, it's just, but it's all good. Hopefully, England win it next year. <laughs> World Cup. And Sancho and 
Rashford and Saka score the wingers, winners. Yeah, I'm calling it here first. That'd be good. Or maybe they'll good. go and, and play for their other country. <laughs> That's what they want, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll get so much love. They would. They, they won't would. have to worry about no monkey business. Mm. <laughs> but I know it's easier said than done because a lot of opportunity probably this comes. Yeah. Versus like if they were to go um, and play for another country. Well, I, I don't know all the ins and outs. but yeah, It's um, easy to say that. But, yeah. you know, when you're growing up, you watch England on TV, you see yeah. everyone getting gassed. Um, you kind of, as a f- young person that plays football, you kind of dream of, 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 of playing in those sort of games. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, what, Jamaica. England? Yeah, of course. Come no, on, no, man. no. Listen, if, if Sterling played for Jamaica, he's the love he'll get. Of course. But I'm saying, but, if you're a footballer, you play yeah. football every Saturday in yeah. a local park mm-hmm. and you see like all the England players on TV, all the hype around it. That's what you dream to to, to be a part of, 100%. But I, I, was, I, just, I was watching something the other day with Zaha. I don't know if you know Zaha. He's a Crystal yeah. Palace footballer. He was talking mm-hmm. about how he turned down England because he didn't feel that he was part of it. Mm-hmm. Like as soon as he went to Ivory Coast where his family's from, he got love. People were cogging him, yeah. showing him so much love. But he gets so much hate from it, the people in England and social media, it's true. the press as well, yeah. the media. True. So that's true. that's one of my things. So. True. How how far do you think England would get if there wasn't no black players in their team? Uh, I'm allowed to say that. It, not just black players, like immigrants. I think they done something in the press the other day, like without any immigrants or yeah, mm, immigrants. I say, yeah, but immigrants. There'll be like two or three players. Yeah, in the start lineup. It'd be crazy. Imagine that. I'd be mad. But speaking on racism, so profiling. Um, I want to speak about profiling <laughs> and why black, well, mainly young black people get profiled everywhere they go throughout life. Um, in schools, you know, at work. Um, we even had an incident ourselves. I don't know if you guys may have seen it online. Um, we had an incident at Asda with a security guard where I was shopping actually. We were shopping for an event. Usual shopping we get, you to get like a whole, right, a whole heap of shopping. And the way I do my shopping, I kind of do it in boxes where I'll separate all the different fruits and the veg together. So it just makes it easier for, for the studio. So um, I left the security the gates now, got through, I was fine, no problem. And then something just said to me, let me just turn around. And it was a it was an Asian security guard. Um, he started waving the security tag in front of the gate and I couldn't believe it. He set the alarm off on purpose to purposely stop me so you can check my bags. But I didn't fathom what actually happened because I, I continued to walk. And I thought, hold on, did he just do that? So I went back and, and I challenged him. And he was like, I'm doing my job, I'm doing my job. And then I started filming him and he had nothing to say. And I just walked away. And that evening, I just really, I was really thinking about it that evening. I was thinking, hold on. I, like, or even in a magazine for Asda as well. Like our faces are in there. And I really thought about it. And I, I was kind of contemplating whether to put online or not. And I did in the end. I put on my personal one first and people were telling me to put on the business one and I did. And I got so much support and, you know, mm. it's not we're not the only ones going through this. We just got a platform to, to let people know. Exactly. A lot of people have, it happens to people every day. So I'm kind of happy that we did that and people, a lot of people reached out and hopefully yeah. just... We had to do that, you know, because mm. we feel that definitely when my brother sent it to me, I was like, bro, like, this happens too many times. Put yeah. it up. Too many times as yeah. well, we want to be silenced as well. Yeah. Sometimes we feel bad for being a part of that stigma of the loud black man or the loud black woman yeah. making too much noise, being too aggressive, always feeling as if we're oppressed. But you can't tell, the oppressor can't tell the oppressee mm. that you're <laughs> you're going on, like you're being too oppressed. Like it doesn't make any sense. Mm. So we should f- so w- literally voice our opinion and, and speak our truth. Yeah, and, that's, that's, and I was actually, sorry, 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 sorry. I went to, so I, um, I was contemplating actually putting it up. Like Craig yeah. said, you know, I don't want to be that angry black guy mm-hmm. putting it up. I was contemplating for a while, but I spoke to a few people who said put it up. So, yeah. See, the thing, what's drawing is that we, we feel like that when we're not even in the wrong. Mm. Like, we have to, we have to, we have to, like, um, um, double think, oh, should I post it? Should I not post it? When we should, when we're not even in the wrong. So exactly. we, need to, mm-hmm. we need to blast these people for their nasty behaviour. But what did um, Asda say when, when you posted it? What are they doing about it? Boy, yeah, when we spoke to them about it, um, Renee, who's our 
who help, help handles our communications and ex- like our stuff on emails and stuff. Big her up, Renee. She was like, no, you guys need to email as they're now emailing them now. So she emailed them, told them about what happened, the contacts that we do have, the PR agency. And they saw it and they apologized and they said, this is what Asda said, a little paragraph saying we don't adhere to, we don't, you know, put up with any racism. That's not what we're about. Basically, apologizing in a short little paragraph, like a copy and pasting. And then we were like, no, nah, th- this, this isn't really taken seriously. So we wanted to take it higher. Yeah. So we went to in-house Asda. They then forwarded us to in-house Asda. They contacted Sean person, didn't it? They yeah, they you. actually called me actually, which I thought was great. You know, someone called me, was basically just apologizing and just saying that how the member of staff, well, it's not actually a member of staff, it's a third party. You know, when they get security, it's, it's a third yeah. party person that they hire. Mm. So he's no longer working there anymore. But we kind of feel like it's more than that. You know, it's mm. more than someone just saying sorry. It's like protocols need to be put in place yeah. so this doesn't happen again because it's obviously something that's been happening for a long too many times. From what I can remember, even when I was younger. Yeah. Um, you know, people going through this all the time. So the we want to speak to the CEOs. We want to speak to the, the higher people and have a conversation, bring them on a the podcast, do what we've got to do so it doesn't happen again to our to our yeah, children. You know? Exactly. So we're kind of pushing for that, you know, Zaya. Speaking to the CEO, the managing directors about protocols that they have in place because we when we put it up, we saw messages that people who are security guards that used to work at ASDA or still work at ASDA, different yeah. branches... And they're told by supervisors if they feel that someone's stealing to wave the security tag. Yeah. So they can search them. Yeah, of course. That's that's blatantly what it was. Yeah. So we wanted to kind of like, because obviously we've worked for Asda a couple of times and we want to, they, they're good people there. You know what I mean? But they need education. They need education. They need to know the seriousness of this sort of situation that continues to happen. And unfortunately, most of those people might not be black and they don't understand the, the, the struggle that we go through and that the, the continual um, accusations that we always go through and it needs to stop. Yeah. And because we have a platform, yeah. those sort of things are raised to yeah. awareness. Yeah, and guys, it just goes to show that no matter who you are, no matter who you are, I mean, our faces in the magazine. Mm. Like when I was buying, a, sorry, sorry, when I was buying a shopping, I was speaking to one of the cashiers there, and you know, at the end of the cashiers, the magazines are like a whole heap of magazines. Mm. I was like, yeah, we're in that magazine, you know. Mm. Not to know. A few <laughs> minutes later, <laughs> man's telling me I'm stealing mushrooms. <laughs> like, you man, man trying to make a little jerk mushrooms, you know. You got a like a brown stew mushroom and that, but listen. But yes, yeah, definitely, it's a deep, deeper root. Mm. Of course, you know, that needs education. Mm. And yeah, because it happens a lot. Like I said, got a lot of messages from people saying that it's happened to me. Same things happened to me. Mm. Um, I put it out there, but no one really heard it. So we pay for I better like days. I don't know how, how they will tackle this because they've got a job to do. And then at the same time, you mm-hmm. can't just be like the people that you pick. Cause, like, how do you pick these people? If, if yeah. you've got to check people, like, how, exactly. how, are they, how are they going to make this? I'm interested to see how mm-hmm. they're going to make this better. This is this is what we're pressing because we're not letting this one go. We're not letting this one go where we feel it needs to be addressed. We feel we're kind of the voice of the people where who don't have a voice, you get me, who don't have the platform that we do. And we're not just going to let it slide on a paragraph apology. Things need to change. Yeah. Policies need to be corrected. It needs to be brought to the forefront. And certain responses that we did get by email we felt it wasn't taken seriously. So we're pushing to to to, to speak to the CEOs and we'll let you know how it goes. We also spoke to Cephas as well, who actually had, big up Cephas, he's got an amazing platform that bigs up and brings more power to black men um, and yeah. also black people. It's called the Black Network, I believe. I don't want to misquote that, but it's got an amazing yeah. initiative there. He's got some powerful... Yeah powerful projects in yeah, art yeah. galleries and mm. yeah the incident as well yeah. a similar incident um i don't I can't remember the ins and outs but it was it, i think he was on shopping somewhere and they accused him of stealing bags when he didn't you know and he got oh, basically was, was, where's man, the receipt for the suitcase yeah suitcase mm. or something like that so and blue, and he, uh, blue water was it blue water Blue water. yeah 
Mm. And um, I think I believe that Blue Water put out a statement, mm. you know, condemning what happened and just supporting him as well. So it was really great. So it would be good for other companies to do that yeah. as well and take heed of that. And he met with them as well, mm. the CEO, because he actually said to the security guard who was like holding his hand because he thought he was stealing, what you guys are doing, I'm going to take it to the CEO. And then the managing the manager of the store at the time said, oh, good luck with that. See. It's like you don't even believe. But that's another example <laughs> of looking down on us, yeah. thinking that we're nothing. But we move, you know. It's terrible. It's terrible. So, yeah, we're meeting up with him soon. Yeah. So hopefully we'll get him on a podcast too because it needs to be addressed. Some people don't like us talking about this, but we're going to talk about this too. You get me? Personally, for you guys, have you been through any incidents yourself with maybe racially profiling or being stopped by police, things like that? Zaya? About last week, I was in the car with uh, our two friends. Um, we were driving down Figs Marsh in Tootin. Wasn't doing anything wrong. Normal, just normal driving. And just because... I'm sure it's because he was driving a nice car. My friend had a, um, I think it was a, a BMW X4. The driver was a mixed race guy and the passenger was black and they stopped us. Wasn't doing anything. Just driving mm. in an area where they probably do a lot of stop and what, what car was it? Uh, a BMW X4. Oh, oh, drug dealer's car, yeah? Black. All black. <laughs> so they say. But they didn't search the car, but they just stopped, they just stopped us. Oh, okay. They were following us from what they, follow, they followed the car for a little while and then they waited and put the blue lights on. And something happened as well the other day at work where there was police in um in the station. Uh one guy, I don't think he had a ticket, so there was two friends, two black guys. One didn't have a ticket and one did, and but they saw that they were together. So the one who paid, they stopped him and they held him. You're not meant to do that. That's abusing your power. You can't mm. stop a paying customer just because you see the other one doing a U-turn. Mm. And I got involved and I said, and I was saying to the guy, oh, don't give them your name. You don't have, you know, you don't have to do that. Mm. And then, I sh- to be honest, I shouldn't really get involved because I'm at work. So, you know, they work with, with the organisation. So they're there to be helping us. But mm. you're not helping us by stopping a paying customer. Yeah. So I didn't think that was right. Then he was holding him. They were, held, they were holding him for long, hoping that the friend would come back up. I don't think they should have done that. Don't you think that's the views in the power? You're stopping yeah, a paying yeah. customer. Yeah, that's what it is really. A lot of abusive abuse of their power. Um, I can I can say how many times. <laughs> I can't even remember how many times I've been stopped. Um, oh, just for context, guys, I work in the underground. Oh, you work in the underground? <laughs> <laughs> People need to know that for sure. For sure. Yeah, so the first week I, I passed my driving test and I got a car, I got stopped. After that, psh, boy, so many times in it. But I remember the last time, probably last year, year before. It was JP. Yeah, with jo- yeah. Joshua, our friend Joshua. He, we were driving from London Bridge, from London Bridge to Oval. The police car was following us, and I was yeah. like, They're gonna the, whole way, the 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 whole way from London Bridge to Oval. And when they stopped us, you know the usual. There's a lot of thefts in the area yeah a lot of stabbings, lot of stabbings in the, area, in the area, yeah. and all that rubbish and i was like mate i'm just looking to go home to my wife and my kids <laughs> you get me i've yeah. got i've got like a was it at the time it was about nine month old twins yeah going home and they're like no you need to get out of the car i was like why do i need to get out of the car he said oh, there's been this that that big bully van you know i think it was two or two cars was it bro i can't remember i think yeah it's two cars it was definitely two cars Pulled us over, um, put us in handcuffs. He said, "Do you just want to talk yeah, to you, mate?" Put then put me in handcuffs. In handcuffs. Yeah, handcuffs. Yeah, handcuffs. Is that it? Handcuffs. handcuffs. It was just the shock of it to mm. be in handcuffs, and the emotional, the emotional, you could say trauma of it. It just make it makes you think what, and you can imagine. I can imagine other brothers getting aggressive about that. And then once they get aggressive about that, this is another excuse to bring them to the station. And that's what they want. They exactly. want they're, they're trying to push buttons purposely mm-hmm. and just test the waters of you. Yeah. Sometimes when you see brothers um, just getting stopped, sometimes looking at it, I think, what's really going on here? Mm-hmm. Like sometimes a normal person looking, you think, oh, what have they done here? Exactly. But nine times out of ten, you're getting stopped for no reason. For no reason. Because when they, uh, search, they, they search the car. They search the car. Yeah, they, they search, search the car. The car. Is that it? We need to know our rights as well for all exactly. that stop and searches yeah. in cars because I don't, I don't even know all the because I, I haven't personally haven't been stopped and searched, but 
Yeah. In terms of getting out of the car, wh- when are you? When do you have to get out of the car? Exactly. To be honest, I don't even I, I, know. I don't, all I, I need I to, all I know is they don't need, they don't have a right to have your, to know who you are, your name, where you live, those sort of details like that. In terms of the car, I'm not too sure. Um, I think we should definitely put it in, in the description of this well, video. A reasonable reason if, if something's happened. I'm not even sure. I don't sure. know, but get I in the comments, guys. We'll, we'll be, we'll put something in the description yeah. in terms of what is the actual um, legislations to be able mm. to, they have and the rights they have yeah. um, when searching, stopping the search. But I know they don't have a right to know your name, your address, mm. stuff like that. But Or put you in handcuffs for no reason. Exactly. <laughs> but they probably do. But anyway. But when but when you get stopped though, they ask they want to see your driving license. So you have to you have to give them you have to give them something. Yeah. Right? S- or is it or if you don't give the license then they can search the car. Yeah. So t- in in all honesty, at the time I gave my name, but only after yeah. that I went to research what they actually have the rights to do. They oh, don't okay. have the rights to to have the name, etc., mm. etc. Et um, but yeah, it's just it continues to happen. Sick of it. And I, I told the guy, the white guy, I said to him, Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been through this all along. We all know why you're doing this racial profile. And I wasn't even aggressive about it. I was just very peaceful about it. You know, you're just tired. You wouldn't want to go home. Yeah, tired, but also knowing that you have no power over me. No matter what you do yeah. right now, it's not gonna stop my me winning. It's not gonna stop us winning. It's not gonna be stop what we're doing. You get me? Yeah. Yeah. Do what you do. You know, we know what you're like. And I just asked a question to the guy as a white police officer. Have you ever been stopped? And he was like, um, Yeah, I did once with my missus. I said, You're lying. I said, you're lying, bro. Like, you've never been stopped. And he was just quiet. And Why that's the reality. Who my missus? Is that, he's just chatting rubbish. He just thought of whatever. I feel, I feel like they just do it for, them, for their self-satisfaction. Mm. For just for power. Mm. So it's like, almost like slavery days where it's like, when they see a black person, they want to show the domination. Yeah, I can stop you. I can do what I want. Mm. I got the power to do, to stop you over or to pull you over, put you in handcuffs. It's, it's some of them, I think some of them is that the power element, some of them is just, they're just doing what they're told. I don't want to be like, all policemen are racist, but the actual institution and its protocols are racist. A hundred percent. So not all of them are racist at all. Some of them are decent guys, good guys, but what they're told to do is discriminative, is racist. And that's leading back to obviously security guards as well, the protocols in there, stopping racially profiling at the shop, stopping you for no reason, waving security tags exactly. to stop you because how you look. Same mm-hmm. kind of thing in the policing. Tired. But I yeah. don't really see like, um, well, improvements. I guess there has been improvements, but uh, I don't know. Tired. I don't know if I even want to. What we're going to do, we're going to try and get someone on. Maybe get a, a lawyer. Any lawyers out there? Yeah. We'll get you on a podcast. We just need, a, we just need our own police. A, new, a whole new organisation. Yeah, the black police. <laughs> Yeah, they they need to go in the bin and we need to have our own police, exactly. our own FIFA organization, own police. They won't have these worries. Mm-hmm. But guys, imagine America that... though. Imagine what it's like in America. Yeah, crazy. Like, you think this is bad, yeah. People are. This is bad, but yeah, America. Like people, people are, scared, are, scared are dying. Of their lives, yeah, their lives. People are dying, people man. Look America. at George Floyd. The only really way is by destroying the bad stuff. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's that is like the ultimate. Mm. I know it's it might extreme what I'm saying but I'm just saying like if anything if there's anything that's um, spoiling something you have to you get rid of it right mm. um, yes. but, but it's yeah. going down to certain <laughs> protocols and addressing yeah. them certain ways of doing things how they're doing things understanding why they do certain things Statis- they can come back and say statistics say certain areas there's more crime but yeah. I would like to actually look at those statistics and fight against those because I was listening to something from a Carla who really does challenge those type of t- statistics that says black areas have more crime than white areas. And he challenges that by saying it's facts. Nice. True. Brixton versus uh, Scotland, uh, uh, Scotland. And certain statistics actually show those other areas have more crime than Brixton. Mm. So that's just an excuse to allow us to there's be in a state of oppression. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a media. I feel like there's, 
there's just crime wherever there's you know where the the surroundings are if there's that poverty mm. if um you know like it's not really about a a color thing where the crime is the crime crime will be exactly. wherever the there's the way... a lot of poverty um yeah, say that again yeah I was just saying that it's just the way that the media portrays it yeah they just like to paint this picture that it's a, a black thing when it's not. Mm-hmm. And again, like, well, I'm just touching on what my brother says, uh, what, what the media portrays then seeps into a lot of the adults. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the adults believe the media. Yep. Straight away, whenever they then see a black guy, maybe outside their house, they f- automatically think something's going on. Even our own people. Mm. If they saw a black guy outside their house, they're like, what's he doing? Yeah. yeah. What's he doing? He to He's on the phone. So, Is he calling his friend to come and rob us? You know what I'm saying? It was that fuck doing, or it's just that subconscious. That we've been conditioned. We've been conditioned. Yeah, we've been conditioned to be like that. Yeah, through the media, definitely. Through for the media, people. and also it's through different. our own sort of, I don't know, like growing up. You know that negative portrayal of our own self. Mm-hmm. Then that portrayal then is for other black people as well. So there's so much layers to this, man. It's deep. Cool. So there we have it. So, on a positive note, the recipe of the podcast. <laughs> yeah? I'm going to miss out. It's, it's a new you one. tell me? I don't know. What is it? What do you can, you sm- can you smell it, Zaya? I can smell it. All right, cool. We've got some, <laughs> um, something different today. Curry aki with some yam oh. and some steamed cabbage and a little mm. planting as well. Lovely. Can you send yeah. me some in an Uber? Thanks. <laughs> you can virtually eat it. Yeah, on Zoom. <laughs> on Zoom. Aki, um, yam, and some nice. steamed cabbage. Oh, it looks, looks amazing. It's something different, you know. What's been? Uh, yeah, yeah, oh. you little yeah, right? Pounded yam and... Pounded yam and stew, just... So what is it you got there? <laughs> Curried aki, did you say? Yeah. Curried aki. Yeah. Um, yam. It's white yam because it's cheaper. <laughs> Planting and steamed cabbage. Mm. Yeah, so... Aki's got some coconut in there, ginger, garlic. There you go. Here you, here you go. Like you always better. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I already know this is going to taste good. You know, there's certain recipes. You know it's going to taste good. Mmm. The curry Aki's got a nice yeah. hint, hint of spice in there as well. We're doing a free review. Professional eating. Yeah. Professional eating around. Professional eating. Taking my job. He's like, yeah, this is nice, man. Got right, a nice sweetness and spice in the ac- Ooh, Wow. Mm. The thing about aki, it soaks up flavour so well. That, that coconut, nice. the scotch bonnet, the ginger and the garlic. Guys, we're going to put the recipe in, in the description. You guys need to try it. The way mm. how Craig's enjoying it is making me too jealous. He's mm-hmm. enjoying it too much. <laughs> wow. Not every day, three hours waiting, oxtail and thing. This is a quick 30 minute recipe. The curry, listen. The curry, yeah, it's so nice. All right, all right, all right. I can't even lie, bro. <laughs> you put your foot in this, you know. Because, boy, mm. the coconut, the aki, the curry, listen. And then the yeah, yam the soaks up the, the curry so you, well. You, you need to see the car- camera crew here. They're just salivating. Is it salivating? <laughs> salivating. <laughs> salivating. <laughs> salivating. Salivating. And all, all I've got here is my dry water. It's all right. What's that, rum? I wish. <laughs> that rum will cure it, you know? Cure, cure, cure corona. Rum, rum will cure it, yeah. It will cure the hunger for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I haven't eaten all day, by the way. Oh, haven't you? No. I you are fasting today. <laughs> it's all right, man. Next time, we'll save you some. I'm lying. Anyway, right, thank thanks, you. guys, <laughs> for tuning in. Bye. Good luck yourself. See you soon. Take care.